So one of the defining features of the Laravel framework is the eloquent ORM. And as David pointed out, an ORM is a, an object relational mapper which allows you to map database rows to objects in PHP um, and allows you to create associations between these different tables really easily without having to write a lot of SQL under the hood and gives you a really nice syntax for searching for an individual record. So instead of saying select star from courses where something else, you would say courses find all or courses find and the idea of the course you're looking for and it would determine what SQL is supposed to be written and execute it uh, properly for you and give it all back to you in an object which you can then display on the screen really easily. So the way that the Eloquent ORM works is to, um, the convention that it uses is that if you have a database table, which is pluralized, so for example, courses, you would create a class in the models folder called course. And that's all you'd, you'd have to do is say, uh, class course extends Eloquent. And it, under the hood, automatically assumes that what the table name is, what the ID is, so it assumes that there's an auto incrementing ID, and it's, uh, let's, sorry. Let's go ahead and just, so there is one that comes with Laravel by default, it's called user, and uh, it uses some advanced features called interfaces, which we're not gonna go over, but you can see class user extends eloquent, and you can set the table name if you're not following the convention of the pluralized, uh, it having a plural table name and a singular class name. But we'll go ahead and create one for, given the example from before, we'll go ahead and create one for courses. So we'll do course.php and do class course extends eloquent. And so I'm going to jump into PHP my admin and actually rename this table to courses. So now I have a courses table with just some example data from the course catalog that David had mentioned. And now that this course is in the models directory, we can go ahead and say uh, course uh, limit 10, so we only want to get 10 records, uh, get, and we'll say that this is courses. And so now we're going to go ahead and let's create a, uh, a better view to display this stuff actually. So I actually created a blade template earlier and I'm just going to go ahead and copy it over here just to save, save a few minutes of time. Okay, so I created a, in the views folder, I created a courses.blade, and so I'm gonna do view make courses, and I'm gonna pass a variable courses with the, uh, actually that's not gonna work, one second. Courses title. Okay. Okay, so it didn't work because it says access denied for user root at localhost. So um, can anyone tell me what they think might be the problem here? So the problem is that I never told Laravel what, who, who I am in trying to access the database. It doesn't automatically uh, know that, that I am able to access the database I'm trying to query. So in the config folder that I had mentioned earlier, there is a database.php file. And in here, we need to say that we are username uh, jharvard and password crimson. And now if we go ahead and do that unknown database database. So the database that we're trying to hit 
is called Courses 50. And let's see, this time it worked. So what it's doing here is it is, let me go ahead and jump back to the controller. So I did courses, limit 10, get. So I just said, I only want 10 rows from the database, fetch those for me, and put them into this courses variable. So this courses variable is now an object which contains the different columns which I can access um, really easily in the, in the template. So I say for each courses as course, let me go ahead and zoom in, and I just say course title or course description, and it goes ahead and outputs whatever the, the database row is there. So as you can see, it's, it's much simpler, uh, much easier to reason with than having to write out the, the SQL by hand and then figuring out how to, how to map it into an object. But where it gets really powerful is when, as David uh, sort of had mentioned earlier, when you start to have different tables that you want to associate with each other via foreign keys, you can have these objects do the heavy lifting of the querying and figuring out what pairs up with what and, and how, to, uh, how to go ahead and render that. So if we look at, let's go ahead and jump back here really quick. So a database config, how'd I got in there? Do you think, I, should I do this now? Let's skip, skip, skip this for now. So the different types of, or the different types of relations um, by default, some of the, the there are a few more than this, but these are the four most common, are a has one, a has many, a belongs to, and a belongs to many relationship. So you can sort of think of a has one as, you know, if you only have one of something. So in this case, an account, uh, this is just a really dumbed down, simplified example schema, but an account only has one supplier in this case. So there's a supplier ID, and a supplier, so in the accounts table there's a supplier ID and the supplier itself has an ID and there's only, it's a sort of a one-to-one -one relationship. Whereas a, there's a belongs to, so the, an order could only be placed by a customer, um, whereas a customer might have a bunch of orders, uh, the order only belongs to a single customer. There, you can't have three different people buying the, uh, the same thing in this example. And then a, a has many, it, like I said, the, the, or, the, uh, the customer has many orders, but not the other way around. And then a belongs to many is the more, more advanced uh, relationship that, that David had been uh, going over earlier, where you sort of join two tables via a interim table. So in this case, uh, assemblies parts is a join of the assemblies and parts or in the example that we were giving earlier, the, uh, the courses and the, uh, uh, the instructors were joined by a course instructor join table. And in, in this case, and in Laravel's case, it actually doesn't require a, uh, a primary auto-incrementing ID on the, on the join table, though uh, you, you can have one. It actually doesn't require one for, for it to work the way it does. So let's go ahead and set up sort of a few different objects based on the, the layout of the database that we have right now. And so we're going to keep courses as our base object, but we're going to say that in looking at the database table, the course uh, has many meetings, so has many meeting times. Uh, it belongs to a department, and it belongs to both many instructors and uh, requirements. So there might be multiple requirements for the course, but the requirements could be shared by different courses. So let's go ahead and see if we can model that a little bit using the eloquent models. So we've got, let's start with the instructor.php. So similar to before, we're going to go ahead and say class Instructor extends eloquent.
And so this would assume, as I said uh, earlier, that there is a plural of instructor, instructors, and this is the table that it will be mapping to. And now on the course, we'll go ahead and say, we'll create a method. So it's a public function instructors, or public, sorry, I'm, yeah, public function instructors. And the way that Laravel sets up relations is you return a this belongs to many instructor. So this tells us now that the course um, is associated with the instructor model. That's all we needed to do to set up that relationship. And now, in, as we're in this, in this loop here, we can say, so because it belongs to many relationships, there can be one or more instructors. So it's, it's an array, or it's, a, uh, it's an object that has more than one instructor on it. So we're going to also loop over it here and say, for each course instructors as instructor, uh, and then pick out the first name and the last name. I believe those are the columns. So first and last could be first name, last name, but first and last are the way it's, it's set up in this course catalog. And let's go ahead and see if that renders. So instructors, yep, it looks like they're showing up unless there's not one associated. So in this case, there are no instructors listed with that course, but in all the other cases you see one or more instructors as defined in the relationship. So one thing that is sort of a gotcha sometimes with, with ORMs like this is you go ahead and define a relationship and you think, okay, it's fetching my data properly. As I'm looking here, everything's rendering on the screen all right. Everything's okay. It's doing all the SQL behind the, hood, behind, uh, behind the scenes for me. But what's happening here is when it first fetches the courses, it doesn't know that you're also going to be looking for the instructors. So it fetches all the courses for you, and then it goes to display all this data in the, in the view right here, and then it gets to this for each course instructors. And it says, okay, I don't know what the instructors are yet. Let me go fetch those. And it's doing this every single time that you're going through the course loop. So every single time that you're trying to display a course on the screen, it's sort of late, late to everything saying, I need to find what the instructors are for this row. And so it's doing n plus 1 query. So it's doing however many loops you have, it's doing another query, whereas that isn't the most efficient way to go about fetching and displaying your data. So the way to fetch everything up front in Laravel is to say course with instructors limit 10 get. And now it knows it looks no different uh, just to the eye, but instead of doing, I guess it would be 12 queries or so behind the scenes, now it's only doing two or three. So we can go, we can continue in that fashion and set up just a few more relationships. So what were some of the other has many meeting? So similar, we set up a model called meeting. Class meeting extends eloquent, and it should everything should be taken care of here. If we look at the meetings table, it's got a auto incrementing ID. It's plural, so everything should work properly if we try to display the meetings. So 
So let's go back to where we're displaying this. And it was a the relation, sorry, was a has many meeting. So let's look at the meetings table and see what we might want to display here. So let's just display, actually I have a template set up for this. I'll just grab a little table. And paste this in right here. So I'm going to display just some data about the about the different course meetings. And oh, valid argument for each course meeting does mean. Let's see if I missed something here. Uh, meetings, I had it singular. So now we have sort of the, the table here as to the different meetings, what the type are, when it begins, ends, etc. So I could continue on in just setting up these relationships, but as you see, it sort of abstracts the the SQL from having to be written by hand, and it takes care of a lot of the uh, of a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes for you when you create these associations based on the the keys that are set up uh, properly in the database. And as you're going through and installing Laravel, there's a lot. There's so much to cover. It's actually sort of difficult to try to uh, see which part to to bite off and and go over. But there are a lot more which will continue to uh, discuss probably on Monday. Uh, a lot more features to the Eloquent ORM and the different ways of uh, saving data, associating data, uh, deleting things, creating the different scopes for when you're querying, um, inserting related models, etc. So you can take a look through this and I think uh, the, leave what it. the process will be like then moving forward is once we've formed our four group, uh, four person groups, once we've decided on what the various groups' projects are, the way responsibilities will generally be divvied up is one or two of you will sort of go back to the drawing board and figure out, all right, for whatever problem we're trying to solve, here are the entities we have to implement, for instance, an instructor or a core or some kind of joining thereof, and you'll spec out the database tables as we did in the first half of today. Then as Tim alluded to here, the next step in that process will be to come up with the classes, and you'll write a few files that extend Eloquent in this way using some of the the out-of-box functionality, but then also adding maybe some of your own functionality. For instance, get phone number, where you might nicely format the phone number based on some uh, standard theme and so forth. And then all of that information will presumably be communicated to your one or two or other uh, three other people in your group saying, all right, you have these classes, you have this functionality, now start actually writing the logic, implement the controllers. Meanwhile, someone else in your group will handle the views. And so the blade templates that Tim was alluding to, someone will take care of the front end experience and the user interface and the drop down menus and all of that. And even though we've just begun to scratch the surface here, the fact that Tim didn't write a single line of SQL and the fact that he was sort of able to automatically join these multiple tables is where you really start to see things fairly powerfully. And so even though at first it's going to absolutely be a learning curve because you sort of have to learn how this particular framework works, in the end, adding some new table, adding some new feature to a course catalog and the like can take just minutes to do and updating the templates just seconds. So it's really quite exciting what you can start to do quickly. So thanks so much to Tim on that cliffhanger. Um, do take care of the lottery form. Otherwise, nothing to do until you hear back from us in a day or so via email. We'll see you next week.